Notre Dame has picked up a big commitment in the 2025 class with Green Bay, Wisconsin native Notre Dame Academy star tight end James Flanagan committing to Notre Dame. This is a big commitment for Notre Dame in a lot of ways and for a lot of reasons. Obviously, this is a legacy recruit with James Flanagan's father being Jim Flanagan, who played on the 1993 Notre Dame team, was a third round pick of the Chicago Bears, played for the Packers for a year, also a Green Bay native. And if, But even more so, that's a great storyline, but even more so, James Flanagan, Flanagan gives Notre Dame an outstanding tight end in the 2025 class and a player that they've been on for a very, very long time. Uh, no, pick Notre Dame over Michigan, Wisconsin, and Stanford. Also had an offer from Penn State, Missouri, among others. Big pickup for Notre Dame. This is a guy that, uh, especially with everything that went down with Nate Roberts, even though James Flanagan was always a guy that Notre Dame was going to take, really helps solidify the 2025 tight end class situation and gives Notre Dame a, a player that was a must get and a must want, a guy they really wanted. They've been pushing for him for a long time. So we're going to talk a little backstory uh, right now about James Flanagan, talk about the class impact for James Flanagan, and we'll watch a little bit of film for James Flanagan as well. So uh, as we dive into this, James Flanagan as a player, let's first go over the rankings here a little bit. For an IB grade, James Flanagan grades out as a top 150 player. Uh, as far as where the status is for him right now with IB grade, he has not been regraded uh, as on junior film. I don't regrade guys normally until after their, their season is complete. James is about nine games in. He's played eight games so far uh, for uh, Notre Dame Academy so far this season. He plays tight end, also plays middle linebackers, played some defensive end in the past. He has a So he has a top 150 grade now. And he has four and a half star upside. Now, 4.5 star upside grade for me is that of a top 50 player. And I'll dive into the film room as to why right now his upside grade is so high, but why his current grade isn't. Uh, but he's a very, very talented player in a, a big pickup for Notre Dame. He is ranked as a top 100 player by On3 Sports, who has him as the number 93 player in the country. 247 Sports has him at number 116. ESPN 177 and Rivals at 244, both On3 and 247 Sports rank him as the top player in the state of Wisconsin, which gives Notre Dame a second player from the state of Wisconsin in the last B4 classes. They got Billy Shrouth in the 22 class, and of course now they're getting James Flanagan in the 2025 class. So the backstory for James, when you look at him as a player, obviously there's a lot of talent there, and you think, well, as a legacy, dad played at Notre Dame, and so, of course, Notre Dame is going to be the team to beat. That was not always the case, to be honest with you. We had reported, Ryan Roberts had reported at Irish Breakdown and, and something we had been told really from the beginning of his recruitment that he was very much open to potentially going somewhere else. Michigan felt they were in a good place with him for a while. Wisconsin was in a good place with him. He liked Stanford a lot. He visited all those schools. He also visited Penn State. And there was some rumblings that this was not going to necessarily be a typical Notre Dame legacy recruit where he was just going to pick name Notre Dame because Notre Dame had to really convince him that they wanted him, number one, and not just because he's Jim Flanagan's son. And, and kudos to Jared Parker for this. Jared Parker did a tremendous job because I would argue that when this thing first got started, Notre Dame was not his leader. Now, I don't know that he necessarily had a leader, I think he was very open to other schools, and Notre Dame had to do a very good job of convincing him that he they liked him because of him, not because of who his dad was. And that's really what this came down to. So if you're looking at, you know, why did Notre Dame go after James Flanagan, it had everything to do with the fact that of his fit in the class, which I'll get into, and his talent, which I'll get into. But they had to convince him of that and, and make sure that he understood that, that, hey, we're not recruiting you because who your dad was. Yes, that's cool. That's a great story, but we're recruiting you because you're really talented. Notre Dame's staff made it very clear to him, look, we're trying to win championships here, and we're not going to do that uh, by just recruiting a bunch of legacy players, you know, pa uh, uh, players of legacies, and hoping that their their kids will be as good as, as, as they were. No, they're recruiting those kids because they think those players are very talented. It's why they recruited Bryce Young. It's why they're recruiting James Flanagan. And so, obviously, this is a guy that they had to convince of that, and Jared Parker did a great job of this. I mean, you talk to – to, to James and those around him. And they'll tell you, Jared Parker was very influ influential and instrumental in making this happen. And, and like we said, he took a lot of visits. He had been close to maybe committing to Notre Dame a couple times, but he really wanted to take his time. He really wanted to be sure, almost committed in the spring. I believe it was during the blue gold game. 
and and but wanted to hold off because he really wanted to make sure that he was making the decision for the right reasons. And of course, Notre Dame was able to really close the deal on him uh, during the, his last most recent visit, which came during the USC game. So it was shortly after the USC game that James gave Coach Freeman a call and let him know that Notre Dame is where he wants to be. And that's how the, uh, the the recruitment for James Flanagan went out and, and how Notre Dame was able to win that battle. And when you look at it, again, it gives Notre Dame a, a, a big pickup in this class. Let's talk about the class impact. How does James Flanagan impact the Notre Dame 2025 class? To begin, obviously, this is the seventh commitment overall for Notre Dame. He joins an offensive class that now has four players in it. He joins Deuce Knight, quarterback Deuce Knight, big-time quarterback Deuce Knight, running back James, or James Thurman and Daniel Anderson. Notre Dame also has three defensive linemen committed, Davion Dixon, C.J. May, and Joseph Reef. So James gives them a seventh player committed in this 2025 class. There's a little bit more of an impact here. So when you look at, at, at the tight end room for Notre Dame in the 25 class early on, the plan was to take two. This was especially true after uh, Carter Nelson committed to Nebraska. Notre Dame has Jack Larson committed in the 2024 class. And the impression was essentially that they wanted to get a second class in 24 and then take one in 25. Once that came in one in 25, for sure, it might go to two and 25, depending on what happened with the current roster. But when obviously when Carter Nelson committed in Nebraska, Notre Dame went out and got Nate Roberts. But they, I'm quite aware of this. I'm quite sure of this based on my own personal conversations. Uh, but then also what I have been told by some folks that I know over at Notre Dame that Nate Roberts always knew that Notre Dame was going to be recruiting James Flanagan and that they were going to take James Flanagan. That was never a question mark. I know that's what I had been told by people. I had relayed that to uh, the proper people. So uh, even when Nate Roberts committed, who's a, also a very talented player, James Flanagan was always going to be a guy that the Notre Dame staff wanted and wanted to get in this class. And so obviously that was going to be part of it. Now you look at Notre Dame's class, you have a, a player that, in James Flanagan that is a, a bit of a throwback. I don't say throwback. He's not a throwback tight end. He's more of a traditional tight end. Uh, where he is a guy that is is more Cole Komet, Michael Mayer than he is Tommy Tremble in those type of players, which makes him a perfect complement to Jack Larson in the 2024 class and a perfect complement to Carter Nelson should Notre Dame be able to land Carter Nelson in the 2024 class as well, which they are trying to do. And you'll see on the film uh, that James Flanagan is a bit of a throwback player. And, and so getting numbers is fine. Obviously, it's important to get to your numbers. Uh, but it's even more important when you talk about impacting a class, are you impacting a class with the proper skill sets? And you can't just get a bunch of cookie cutter players. When you look at how Notre Dame uses their tight end position, for example, you know, they need guys who can be attached and play at the line of scrimmage and be blockers and move the chains and work the middle of the field and things along those lines. There's a role for tight ends to play out of the box a lot, the, the move around type of guys. And then, of course, the ideal players, the guys can do a little bit all of it. I think James Flanagan has the upside to be that player. But right now, you know for, for sure that he shows up at Notre Dame with the ability to play in more of a traditional tight end role, which gives Notre Dame some really interesting compliments when you look at sort of their four-year recruiting. In 2022, uh, they landed Holden Stace, who's a bit of a move-around tight end, and Eli Raritan, who can play attached but also brings some unique outside tight end skills. So both of them are more modern-ish. Then you go to the 2023 class, which is the current freshman, and they have Cooper Flanagan in the class. And we have already seen Cooper Flanagan, spells his name a little bit different instead of an I, uh, Cooper Flanagan spells it with an A. And we had talked before the year that Cooper Flanagan is a kid that absolutely brings, he can show up and block right now mentality. And we've already seen that. He's already on the field for Notre Dame this year as a blocker. And he's been an impactful player as a blocker already. That's what Cooper brought to the table. 6'6", 6'5", 6'6", 260. Big player, short to intermediate type of guy. James Flanagan has some of that as well, which I'll get to. Uh, then 2024, you bring in Jack Larson, who can block, but he's more of a slot wing. Tremendous ball skills. Not nearly as big. He's you know, 6'3", 225, 230 type of guy. Uh, closer to Tommy Tremble as far as a usage standpoint than what you're going to ask of a Michael Mayer, of a Cooper Flanagan, and a James Flanagan. So they've really kind of had a nice mix. And then in the 2025 class was very clear 
that they were kind of looking for a little bit of both. A guy that was a pass catcher, that was Nate Roberts, and then a guy that was a little bit more traditional, which is James Flanagan. Well, the interesting thing is, is James Flanagan is, is a guy that has shown the ability to produce at a high level, a uh, big play type of guy in high school. He had uh, 22 catches as a sophomore, over 500 yards this season. Uh, as a as a uh, junior in eight games, he missed the first game. I believe he had a hamstring injury in the opener, missed the first game of the year. But he's got 17 catches for 377 yards. He also plays middle linebacker. He's got nine tackles for loss, I believe four sacks as a middle linebacker as well, moves all around, but uh, he's a middle linebacker. But what we've seen from James Flanagan, and I'll show this on film, was a guy that that brings – his speed took a jump, and we'll get into some of those things. So he is a traditional tight end in his usage, but the way that he plays is more Troy Nicholas than it is, you know, more of a uh, an inline, more Cooper Flanagan, right? Or, or or even Michael Mayer, who was a short to intermediate type of guy. James Flanagan brings the ability, like Cole Komet, who I still think should have been used more in that regard, but like a Cole Komet, but also like a, Tr a Troy Nicholas. If you remember, Troy Nicholas was a pretty athletic guy, uh, spent his freshman year playing outside linebacker for Notre Dame, uh, and then, of course, moved to tight end. He was a guy that was over 15 yards a catch in his one season as a starting tight end. I see a lot of that in James Flanagan, that tall, vertically oriented guy, but James Flanagan brings more speed to the table. So when you talk about the impact, I love the compliment that he is to, Car to, to uh, Jack Larson. And then if Notre Dame is able to add Carter Nelson, which is not a given right now, they're still working on him. Uh, obviously, Nebraska is the school he's committed to. They're, they're fighting hard to keep him. But if they are able to land Carter Nelson, James Flanagan, again, is a complement to both of those players from a stylistic standpoint. So he would fit in very, very nicely uh, with the current roster and what Notre Dame has in the preceding class at the tight end position, both currently and then if they are able to add a second player in the class. Now, the the we always do like a what's next at the end. I'm going to do that right here because it's pretty simple. As of right now, with James Flanagan committed in 2025, Notre Dame's resources in the 2020 the, at the tight end position are now geared towards Carter Nelson. That is where you're trying to go with it. And the the pitch to Carter Nelson is is quite different than the one to James Flanagan. James Flanagan is a tight end. He is going to be an attached tight end that can move around a little bit, can do some things in the slot with his size and speed, but he is a traditional tight end where, where Carter Nelson is being recruited as more of a hybrid type of player where you could see him being used a lot more the way Tyler Eifert was where he could be playing some boundary receiver. He could play a lot of slot receiver. He's a guy that could be a vertically oriented player so much different players. So landing James Flanagan does not all of a sudden say to Carter Nelson, hey, uh, sorry, dude, you're not going to have a role. Notre Dame plays a ton of 12 and 13 personnel, and they're going to be able to point to James Flanagan and say, this kid's already 6'5", 225, 230. He's going to be 250 plus by the time he shows up to Notre Dame. He's an elite athlete in a lot of different ways, but he's a power athlete. You know, great discus type of guy. He's a great power athlete, plays hockey, where Carter Nelson is more of a, you know, windmill dunker on the basketball court. Very, very different players and guys that you can use together. That's going to be the pitch. And it's true. I mean, that's it's a it's the pitch because it's it's accurate. And so that's where Notre Dame has been able to or is going to be able to have an impact where they can still try to convince uh, Carter Nelson that he needs to be part of of what Notre Dame is doing and how this commitment does not in any way diminish your opportunity with Carter Nelson based on the the different ways you plan on using both players. Lastly, I want to talk about, I want to get in the film room a little bit with Carter Nelson and, and take a look at what he brings to the table from a skill set standpoint. We're going to bring up some of his uh, junior film. We are not going to spend a ton of time on this because there's just a few game films right now. Uh, we'll do a more thorough breakdown at some point in time where Ryan and I will get together and do a more thorough breakdown. But I wanted to give you guys just a little taste of what Car of what uh, um, James Flanagan brings to the table. This is going to mess me up. I keep wanting to say Cooper Flanagan. Be, but uh, James Flanagan brings to the table, and you guys are going to see that in the film here. I'm going to bring up a couple different clips from him, and the first one, it talks about uh, you're going to see something that I think is a little bit of an improvement over his sophomore film. Now, what you see on junior film that's exactly the same as sophomore film, really strong blocker, which we'll get into, very strong hands, which we'll dive into, overall athletic kid. 
But the big thing that I've seen of him as a as a junior is going to be this right here. And this is just pure vertical speed. And this is a kid to me that can run and stretch the field. He brings a lot more speed to the table. You don't just see this on this clip where he kind of comes off a little bit of a delay and then sees that seam and then hits it fast. You also see it on some other plays. He's got about a 40. He's got a play earlier in the year where he scores from about 40 yards and catches it on a little slide route and then just takes off up the sideline, makes a guy miss and sprints to the end zone and brings a lot of speed to the table. Here he is playing linebacker, uh, but he's got a lot more vertical speed and, and you see the closing speed right there. He's a little bit unorthodox as a defensive player. Like he's not a guy that you're like, oh my gosh, he could play linebacker at Notre Dame. That's not what he brings to the table, but you can see the athleticism, especially when he starts getting an open field and you see some of that closing ability. You also see he's a very nimble athlete. Uh, very loose, good balance, very loose hips, uh, shows really impressive agility. He's not a great route runner yet, as you can see right here. A little sloppy as a route runner, but he's a guy that has the physical tools to eventually be a very good route runner. It's just about they don't ask him to do a lot of that at this point in time. When you, when you, when you look at his high school film, they ask him to do a lot of just crossers and check downs. They don't have him run a ton of routes. Again, he's played eight games. He's got 17 catches. For 377 yards it's not because he can't be an impact player that's just not the offense he plays in and so he's more right now a dominant run blocker that can also make big plays in the pass game again the last two years he's got 39 catches and he's averaging over 22 yards a catch on his catches so certainly a, a lot of big playability you see him quickly getting up to the second level he's a punishing blocker now the thing that i want to see a little bit better from him is his initial footwork he tends to kind of lift his butt up a little bit. He doesn't explode his hips through contact initially. A little bit of a slow starter off the ball. Not not athletically slow starter, just the way that he comes off. It's just a, it's almost like they're kind of asking him to do it. Uh, but you see just really good foot drive right there. He's a really strong kid, like surprisingly strong for a kid who's only 225, 230. And you can see that here. He's got a lot of blocks. I'm going to show one uh, one goal line play on another clip, but you can see it here. Just a lot of power, drives his feet through contact, very strong hands. The other thing is, is yes, he's got the he's big, he's he's gonna be 250 plus when he gets to Notre Dame, and he's strong and all that. But there's a want to. That's what I'm talking about right there. It's just not not a great get off, not necessarily because he can't, but just I don't I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just not a great get off there. But when he hits people, he drives them back, really drives them back. And what you got to understand about Wisconsin football. Wisconsin football doesn't produce like a ton of Division One players. It's decent, but there's a lot of good football in the state. If you look at the state of Wisconsin, I think there's like four. There's like this Division Three league uh, that's got Wisconsin Whitewater, Lacrosse, all these other type of Wisconsin schools. Saint Norbert, or I also believe, is a, is a Wisconsin school. Carthage, which has had some playoff appearances, but they've got like four teams in the top D three top twenty five. So it's really good football. It's just not elite Division One football. And so he's facing quality competition a lot of weeks, uh, it, but he just dominates it. And you see here, this is an okay route. Very natural pass catcher, catches the ball with his hands uh, pretty well. I'd like to see him at times, you know, extend a little bit more, but he's a very natural pass catcher. Loose hips, he can change direction. He can. He, he, has the, he shows me the potential to be a very good contested catch guy, although we don't really see him do that a ton but very natural pass catcher. When it's all said and done, he's going to be a guy that is, is going to be a legitimate big time, big time pass catcher for Notre Dame. In my opinion, it's a really nice strip right here. You can see the speed, very, very great motor, you know, hustles. And then you can also see the closing speed to what he brings to the table. But I love his desire to be a great blocker, but even there again, gets narrows his base. It's too high. Guy tries to throw him, stays on him. He's got the potential to be a truly elite blocker. Uh, because of all the tools and as his and same thing with route running very good route running potential just has to learn to do it all he's still just a junior high school uh, a lot of stuff he does is just kind of natural talent as his technique improves you're going to see james really take off and that's why right now i you know it's based on sophomore film he'll be close to being a top 100 guy most likely when i redo uh, his junior film because there are some things like i said that 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 i like better from him now the speed is better uh, he he is his route running has improved a little bit, and he's an even more dominant blocker. So he'll 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 go up a little bit. I want to show this block right here. This is probably my favorite block. This is James right here. 
Uh, you'll see that right there. Watch this block right here, and we'll end up with this particular play. Just absolutely punishes this poor kid right here. Just keeps fighting, drives him in, and levels him, and uh, really, really strong block there. So I just I love his effort getting to the second level. He gets to the second level really quickly, uh, which is an important thing for a tight end. Like Notre Dame does a lot of, like a, a lot of counters, and they run power, and they move their tight ends a lot. And, and then they'll ask their tight ends to kind of block a nine technique, down block on some pin and pulls, get to the second level, get into space. They really ask a lot of their tight ends in the run game. And the, and the thing I love about this particular pickup is, is he probably grades out best of all the tight ends they've, they've landed in recent years as, a, as an all-around blocker. I think Cooper Flanagan grades out higher to me as just a point of attack edge blocker He's in that particular area, grades out number one. But James, with his athleticism, brings so much more movement potential. So you're going to see plays where maybe Cooper Flanagan's at the line of scrimmage just down blocking, and then around comes James Flanagan around the edge, you know, w working the counters and the pulls and the tight and the power kicks and things like that. Brings a lot of that potential to the table uh, as a blocker. And then, of course, tons of upside as a pass catcher. Right now, his grade is built around for me is built around love the size and frame, love the athleticism, love the run blocking. A lot of the upside comes from needing to fill out the frame, which he'll get to, but it's more of the potential in the pass game. As I said earlier, he's only has 39 catches in the last two years combined. Uh, prior to, I don't know if that number includes Friday night's game or not. I believe it does, but you know, it's close to it. He catches two, three, four balls a game at the most but he does a lot of damage with it. So as he fills out that frame and then starts to be able to show his pass catching prowess more and more and more, that's where his grade could really jump up for me, get into that top 100 and potentially that top 50 type of range, whether it's now or once it gets to college. And that's what the upside grade is all about, is the potential to maximize his ability looking forward as a collegiate player. And James Flanagan certainly brings that to the table. So Big pickup for Notre Dame. We'll, we'll talk more about this uh, during the week when uh, we get together for our Monday mailbag. And then, of course, we'll talk more about it. Ryan will get a chance to talk more about it during his recruiting show next week as well. So 2025 class is going to keep on rolling, keep on rolling. James Flanagan is the latest big-time pickup for Notre Dame in the 2025 class. Thanks for watching the show. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Share this podcast. If you haven't done so, folks, I'm telling you, sign up for the message board at boards.archbreakdown.com. You are going to love it, I promise you. I uh, really, really, really enjoy the stuff we're going on there. And if you're listening via podcast platform, we would love it and greatly appreciate it if you give us a five-star review. We will talk to you again very soon on the Irish Breakdown Podcast.